In this video, I want to quickly go over a new tool that I just discovered in macOS. Notice that I'm going to press the right option key on my keyboard. I'm just going to tap it and you're going to see something showing up on the screen. Now let's say that I want to click this getting started section. Just going to reach my mouse here and you're going to notice that getting started is in this square here. So if I type these two letters KP, let's give that a try. Just going to type those KP. You're going to notice that a small section with other keys shows up in there. These represent the three rows of keys on my keyboard. Here you notice in my hands the first row where the Q and the U letters are, then where A and J and the bottom row which Z and M. So these three rows are the ones that show up there. To click on the link, I just have to click on any of the symbols or any of the characters. So I could type any character from A all the way up to L or semicolon. Or I think the Q would also catch that as well from Q to P. So I'm just going to type here J as an example. And as you were able to tell, that clicked on that specific link. I already have a tool that does this. I released a video not too long ago, and that tool is called Homebrew. So if I type here on my keyboard the right control, you're going to notice that home row shows up, which is kind of similar, but it gives you labels on every different place where you can click. So if I type, for example, JE here, that is going to click that link. Just going to go back to the previous page here. If you want to learn more about Homebrew, how to install it, how I configure it and all that, I have this video, navigate all your apps without the mouse on macOS with Homebrew. So if you want to learn more about this tool in detail, go and check that video out. So what's the problem or what's the deal with Humbro then? Why am I trying something different if it works just fine? It's because it has its limitations. Let's say that, for example, I want to click on this symbol here that is shown on Sketchy Bar on macOS. It's not a practical example, but I just want to demonstrate what happens. So let me bring up Humbro real quick. And you're going to notice that it only discovers stuff in my browser. And that's it. I cannot click that symbol up there. But with this other tool, if I exit Home Row and I bring up this other tool with right option, you're going to notice that the speaker icon shows here in this BA section. It's a little bit hard to see, but I'm going to click on it right now. So if I type BA and I'm going to type the letter S, notice that I was able to click on that. If I want to click on it again to hide it, I'm going to type right option. I'm going to type here TA and then I'm going to type L and notice that I was able to click on that. I don't have any other examples. I cannot think of other examples in which Home Row cannot click, but it has happened to me not once, but several different times. So in those specific scenarios, I have to reach for my mouse and click with the mouse. With this other tool, you will not have that problem at all. Something that I like about this tool is consistency. I'm going to bring it up and you're going to be able to see that the position is always going to be the same. As you can tell here, it starts in the letter A for the columns, column A, B, C, all the way to column Z here. And the same thing happens with the row A all the way down here to Z. So if you need to click on something around the middle of your screen, let's say that here, over time, you will know that this is around the K location, for example. So I guess it's just a little bit of practice. It'll take some time to get used to. I just installed it today. But if you see it in my future videos, it means that I like the tool. So that's one of the things that I think is beneficial from this tool. Consistency for the different labels that you have on the screen. What happens with Home Row? If I bring it up, you're going to notice that the labels are randomly assigned, right? So I have a C here to close the window here. Other times it could be an F. Notice that I have the K here, K, K, J, J, D, S. So labels are not too consistent. I would say you don't follow a pattern. Not sure how exactly they are deployed, but it seems that it's a little bit more random. Besides only clicking with this tool, there's a lot more things that you can do. You can right click, you can double click, triple click, you can drag. Let's say that you can select this text from here all the way to here. It can be done with this other tool. The name of the tool is Mouseless. As you can see here, this is the GitHub issues page. If I scroll down here, this is where the documentation lives. I'm just going to scroll down a little bit more. Here is the website. Just going to click on it using the tool, of course. OK, J. It takes me there. As you can tell, I'm still using Home Row to scroll. Why? Because I don't think this tool has a scrolling feature. So I do need Home Row for that. So if I tap right command, it brings up Home Row and I can scroll like that. And why do I still use it? Why don't I use a browser extension? Because if, for example, I'm in my system settings, let me bring that up real quick. And I need to scroll down here on the different options. If I bring up Home Row, I can scroll up and down. I can go to these other two sections and I can scroll up and down the options here. So Home Row is not only for the browser, but it works everywhere on the system. If these two tools could combine together or if this scrolling feature would be part of mouseless would be excellent so you can do both things with one tool but for now i think i will have to use both so let's go back to the browser here 
This is the website. To install it, I just did it with Brew. Here's the command. We keep scrolling down here. Notice here that it says that they're working on Intel Mac builds. So far, it only works with Apple Silicon, I think. And Windows and Linux versions are in the technical evaluation stage. Omro is only for Mac OS, but if you're a Linux user, this tool could be very beneficial. So let's keep scrolling down here on the webpage. Notice that there's a video here. I would highly recommend you to watch it. There's a lot of stuff that is covered in the video. And let's keep scrolling down here. There's instructions on how to click. Notice that you can move, drag, and drop, double click, triple click, left, right, middle, back and forward buttons. Let's see what else do we have here. Yeah, there's other information in case you want to read this. Just going to leave this in the screen for a little while. And let's scroll down a little bit more. Health saving ergonomics. There's a link to the documentation there. Support, newsletter, YouTube channel. So you get a seven day free trial. I just installed it today. I'm going to test it out. And if I decide to purchase it after seven days, it is $9.99 lifetime license. What are the cons of this tool? It's a little invasive with your keyboard shortcuts. If you're an advanced keyboard shortcut user, of course. Why? Because the default key maps, let me go back to the documentation here and let me scroll down a little bit here, try to see where that section is. Oh, here. Notice that it says there to show the overlay, tap the command left key. But what's the problem with this? Oh, in case that you noticed, I'm not using Chrome anymore. I'm using this other Zen browser. It's pretty neat. It has a lot of different features that I do like. Notice that I can hide the sidebar here and I can navigate my tabs. I can easily close them. I just installed this yesterday. I'm trying it out so far. I haven't encountered any issues with the browser and I released a video yesterday on how I use it, how I set it up, the shortcuts that it has, and some other things. If you want to learn more about this in browser, go and check this video out and I explain stuff in detail there. Okay, so like I was saying, command left key, that is used to bring up the overlay. The problem is that I use Carabiner and I already have the left command key mapped to something else. I use that to copy text. What do I mean by this? Let me go to another website. I'm going to go to Excalidraw. Let me open that real quick. I'm just going to bring up the overlay here, EI, and I can get there. Okay, much better. Dark mode. I'm just going to insert something here, this shape. So if I select this and I type the left command key on my keyboard, that is command C, or that is to copy. And if I type this other key, that would be left option, that is to paste. If I type it again, that is just going to paste again. If I type it here somewhere else, it's just going to paste. If I insert something else here, this for example, I can copy with here, left command, and I can paste with this other key, left option. If you want to learn how I do this, I have a video about Carabiner, is the one that is shown here on the screen. I explain about all of my different key maps there in detail, including this to copy and this to paste, and way much more. So if you're an advanced key map user, if you use Carabiner, you may have some issues because you may use the keys that this tool uses by default. If I come here to the tool at the very top, I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to go to edit config and you're going to see here the different options that it has. Notice that the default behavior the overlay was left command, I think, but I changed it to option right tap to hide the overlay. I changed that to escape because I was already using the other key that this tried to use by default. This is a nice way to configure this, but I don't like managing this kind of stuff in a GUI. I prefer to do it in a file. So let me just close this. Now, if I go to the very top of the screen again, and I come here to open config folder, you're going to see here the configuration file. If I double click on this folder, it's going to open it in Neovite, which is a NeoVim GUI that I use. I released an updated video about Neovite two days ago. It allows me to open system files and do way more stuff. So if you're a NeoVim user, you will probably want to check it out. The video is here and I'm going to leave it in the video description. So if we come back to this file, this is where you can modify stuff. So I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. Notice here, close dialog. I set this to escape. I set some of them to null because I don't think I'm going to use them for now. Notice here to show the overlay is option right tap. I just modified that there. Hold for the right button. I also set this to control left in case that you want to right click. I'm not sure what happens if you modify this file. I'm going to add it to my dot files because that's where I want to have it. But I don't know what's going to happen when the version of the app is updated and it changes here if this file is still going to work or not, or if you just should modify stuff in the GUI. I prefer to do it in a file because that way I add it to my dot files, but we'll see how it goes. Before making changes to this file, I would highly recommend you to create a copy. That's what I did. That's why you see this config backup.yaml file there. And this is the one that I modified. But just in case that I need to go back to the default config, here's the file. I haven't gone through the manual here on the tool yet. I haven't read too much about it. I was just having the issue with Carabiner. So be careful. If you already use left option, which I did, it didn't play along well with this mouseless tool. So I want to have left option to copy. I just had to switch that in mouseless so that it uses a different key. So overall, this seems like a very promising tool. 
I like it so far. I'm gonna get used to it. I would like to hear from you. I would like to know what you think down in the comments. If you have tips, suggestions, or any tricks that could help me with this tool, I would highly appreciate it. So just let me know down in the comments. If you see me using this tool in the next videos, it means that I liked it. And if I do like it, I won't probably release another video with updates and new things that I learned. So that's it for today. I covered all of the stuff that I needed to cover. Remember to leave a comment down below. That helps so that YouTube shows my videos to more people. I hope this video was useful. I'll see you in the next one.